on these, I'm solving by factoring. So the first thing I need to do is get it in standard form like we've done on a previous assignment. So I need to move this 4x over to this side. And I need to move the minus 2 over to the left side. Standard form is getting everything on the left side. So that means my equation becomes x squared plus 1x minus 2 equals 0. At this point, I try to factor by multiplying to the last number, negative 2, adding to the middle number 1. So that means I believe my numbers are going to be 2 and 1. And since I'm adding to a positive, my larger number is going to have to be positive. So 2 minus 1 would be 1, but multiplying a positive and a negative would give me a negative. So that means when I go to factor this, I'm not quite ready for my answer yet, I have an x um, plus 2 and an x minus 1. Now, since both of these could be equal to 0, it's true that if the first one equals 0, my answer would be 0. If the second one is 0, my answer is 0, because if I multiply a number that, uh, 0 times any number, the answer will be 0. So I can subtract x from both sides, giving me an x of negative 2. On this one, I can add 1 to both sides. All that's basically doing is the sign of switching to get my final answer. So that gives me a value of x is 1. And... That's going to give me my answers there. Now to type your answer in, you can either type the negative 2 and then a comma 1, or you can use this little plus button to add space for additional answer. But your negative 2 and your 1 will need to be in separate boxes. If you're using a keyboard, the comma is great. If not, the little plus button will give you another box so your answers can go in different boxes. That's how you do one of those. We'll try one more like this. On this one, I need to get uh, everything on one side. So only thing over there this time is the 7, but I will need to subtract it from both sides. That gives me an x squared plus 11x plus 30 equals 0. I'm trying to multiply to the last number to 30 and add to the middle number 11. I believe 6 and 5 are the numbers that will do that. So that's an x plus 6 and x plus 5. Since these two things multiply to be 0, it's true that x plus 6 could be what is equal to 0 or x plus 5 could be what is equal to 0. To solve this one, subtract 6 from both sides, so I get a possible answer of x equals negative 6. To solve this one, subtract 5 from both sides, I get a possible answer of x equals negative 5. So I have an answer of negative 6. And then once again, I could use a comma or my little plus button and give me an answer of negative 5. And that's how you work the problems in this section. The factoring is the same, but you do have to get it in standard form first. And then after you factor it, you do have to set them both equal to zero and get the two actual x values as your solution. Okay. For these, uh, because these have a number in front, you cannot just say what multiplies to 8 and adds to 14. You're going to have to use the guess and test method we've learned. So what multiplies to 3x squared is 3x and x. And then what multiplies to 8 is 4 and 2. So uh, to check and see if this is right, I would do 3 times x times 2 is 6x. Then 4 times x is 4x. When I put my 6x and my 4x together, adding those two things together gives me a 10x. And that is not the correct answer. That is not what I need. So that lets me know something did not work out quite the way I needed it to. It does not mean what I did is wrong. It just means I need to try again. I'm going to leave my 3x and my x because I'm pretty confident that's the only way to get my 3x squared. But the first thing I try, if my first plan doesn't work, is I just try switching the 2 and the 4 and putting them in different places. I do know they're both going to have to be positive. If I need to add to make a positive number and multiply to make a positive, that has to be a positive. So uh, multiply the 3x and the 4 now is a 12x. Multiplying the 2 and x is 2x. Now the 12x and the 2x will make a total of 14x. So that lets me know that is my correct answer. I have to check that middle term to know if it's correct. So that gives me a 3x plus 2 and a x plus 4. And this is how you solve a problem like this. Uh, do be aware that it's very important uh, just to, if it doesn't work the first time, just try again and keep going and you should be able to get the answer you need.